it's time. This is kind of a big deal. Recently, Pokemon celebrated its 20th anniversary. And that is crazy to me that it's 20 years old. I figure I may be a bit late, but I should celebrate with everyone else. I'm ready to go. I got my hat on. I mean, it's not its not a Pokemon hat. I, I couldn't find one in time, but uh, it's fine. It's fine. Pokemon! That series your parents always used to pronounce Pokemon, and you pretended it didn't annoy the crap out of you. Admittedly, I'm not the biggest Pokemon fan in the world, but I was there from the beginning. I remember sitting back playing Pokemon Red on that old brick of a handheld, readying myself to watch the debut of the cartoon, and it was an awesome time. I in particular love Generations 1, 2, and 5, own the old school Pokemon Monopoly, have pretty high hopes for the upcoming Gen 7, I even like Pokemon Dash! Okay, no, no I don't. No one likes Pokemon Dash. So let's celebrate this memorable occasion by taking a look at some things that the fanbase have done to inject some craziness into the Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games. I traveled across the internet, searched far and wide, and only courage can pull me through this one. Welcome to Pokemon ROM Hacks. Starting off with probably the coolest hack I played of the bunch, Pokemon Ash Gray. As a kid, I always wished I could have a game where I got to play as the forever 10-year-old Ash Ketchum of Pallet Town, and I finally got my wish in Pokemon Puzzle League. Great. You know, funnily enough, this was just a puzzle game reskin of a Yoshi game, which was also a reskin of a puzzle game where little girls fought each other. That sounds crazy, right? Anyway. Ash Gray basically attempts to retell the plot of the cartoon to the best of its ability, while still giving you a slight bit of freedom. Getting a Pikachu by being late to Professor Oak's lab. Ash's mom gives you a big speech afterwards before sliding away. I, I don't think that actually happened in the, uh, in the cartoon. You run away from a bunch of angry Spearows thanks to Pikachu refusing to fight for you. The jerk. The big fat jerk. Oh hey man, you've been losing weight. Good job. And even Ho-Oh flying above you when the dust settles. Cutscene wise, of all things, it's top notch, but I felt the game itself just wouldn't be balanced. I mean, Pikachu single-handedly taking down Brock's Pokemon was really cute in the cartoon, but in game, that's kind of a bad idea. That is, until you lose to Brock once, then his dad gives you an item to further Pikachu's power, and in combination with the sprinklers going off, making Onix wet and more susceptible to electricity, it allowed me to destroy Onix easily and receive the boulder badge. A plus ROM hack, good on you hackers. Just don't jump into the Cerulean Gym's pool. Guys, hello? Yes, I, I am stuck in your pool, please send help. This great idea would sort of continue in Naranja version, which tries to retell the story of the Orange Islands chapter of the cartoon, with the addition of faulty English. What's your name? Ash? Ranum? Rojo? Tss. Gary, you are mad after I beated you in the league. And then a fight breaks out. Do you want to travel around those islands? Sure! I want all. Then there's Pokemon Adventure Red Chapter, which goes by the story of the manga following the journey of Red, Blue, and Green. Still, I still cannot believe that those are their actual names. I'm not overly familiar with the manga aside from its awesome art style, but it's still neat to see Red teaching a little girl how to catch a Nidorino with his Poliwhirl to finding the mysterious Mew. It's really cool. Oops, I've dropped my balls. You sure did, kid. Good, congratulations. Now clearly some of these hackers were very ambitious, putting in story into games where the story typically takes a back seat and doing a really good job of it, that, that's pretty impressive. But I know you didn't come here to see me talk about the best of the best. Well you may have, I mean, I mean that's really a strong possibility. But instead, what we're going to do is begin our slow descent into madness. This is gonna be a mistake. First up is Pokemon Brown version. That's an interesting color choice. This hack brings you to an all new region of region. You clever girl, you. But you know what? This one's actually pretty good. New level design, polished up sprites, new moves and types that weren't in the original red and blue. If you want a new legitimate old school Pokemon game, this is probably your best option because it just gets weird from here on out. 
like here, Professor Oak's Dream, or as the title screen would say, Vita Trans. Your guess is as good as mine. In this hack, you play as Oak's brother, Cal. Not the most, uh, not the most creative name in the world, I'll admit. I mean, he even looks like him too, just with, you know, sh shorter eyes. This just kinda looks like the character sprite got replaced with Oaks and nothing more, making it really strange that Professor Oak would send out both his twin brother and grandson on the same exact Pokemon journey. More importantly, however, Oak's dream? What kind of dream is this? You're a bit of a weirdo there, Professor Oak, I gotta tell you. Wonderful! Jeez. Then there were a few hacks that were a step above and created all new Pokemon. Like here, Pokemon Chaos Black. It starts off like the adventure that we all know and love. It's time to choose our starter Pokemon. Well, there's Majid, Blikyu, and uh, of course there's Flaon, Fla 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 the Fire Lion. You know what, I'll give the Fire Lion the benefit of the doubt. That's based on something I know exists. What are these two things? But okay, fine, I know how Generation 1 works, I gotta go with the water Pokemon. Let's go, Blikyu. Oh man, this first route has like, a lot more grass. How chaotic. Oh hey look, it's a Tass. There's a, there's a Shizard. There's a Weedle. There's a Rattata. Wait, wait, you're just gonna throw the legitimate Pokemon in with whatever the hell a Tass is? I take back the sarcasm, this truly is chaos. Where's Yeth when you really need him? Let's give this one a shot, Pokemon Ambar. I, I couldn't even begin to explain to you what that is. Oh, I, uh, I guess this is just gonna be in Spanish. Oh, all right then, I took that in high school, I'm good to go. Este es Poyinho un Pokemon. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is that? Like the last one, this seems to be a whole lot like a fairly typical Pokemon adventure. And just like how Gen 3 started, there's the professor being chased. You have a choice now between Lonez, Hitbox, and Linux. I'm more of a Windows guy personally. <laughs> Alright, um, I'll go with Lonez. Oh, dude, what? Alright, Mom, I really don't know if I can handle much more of this. You got any advice? How are you doing, Ambar? You look a little tired. What? You're just gonna start speaking English all of a sudden in this madness? Okay, I'm done. I can't, I'm done. I, this is too much. Now I know what you're asking yourself. What if Pokemon had zombies? It's coming. Introducing Pokemon Snakewood. The main character looks so upset. Hey buddy, cheer up. I started my adventure in what once was a city, only to find three Pokeballs. After randomly picking a ball toy, of, of all things, I found Professor Birch being chased by a zombie. Which realistically, says a whole lot about the good old professor. Equally as scared as zombies, as he is a lone Poochiana. Good on you there, professor. Now being a zombie, you would think that you have to take down the zombie itself. But not here! This zombie is a bona fide Pokemon trainer with a Bulbasaur- Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. A Boilbasaur. You know the rules. Zombies only go away with the destruction of the brain or the elimination of all its Pokemon. Professor Birch will remember this. Needless to say, this hack is ridiculous. But I gotta hand it to him. Would have never thought a Pokemon Cross zombie apocalypse would be this entertaining. How about some Mood Whiplash? On the complete opposite side of the spectrum, here is Pokemon Sweets. Instead of every Pokemon having a zombie version, now they all have a form based on a colorful and fruity treat! Brownie Sore, Straw Mander, Squirt Pie, oh, it's adorable! And pretty tasty too. You may be thinking this is just one major sprite edit, but no, there's even a brand new type chart, all being based on flavors. Now that takes commitment. There's new music, many more double battles in comparison to the original game, and the world is sickeningly colorful. If only there were some zombies. What? Squirpi is evolving! It evolved to... a tart turtle. This hacker's a genius. But now all that's left is the final three, the cream of the crop when it comes to weirdness. 
This first one is a fairly simple scenario. Uh, what if you were playing a typical Pokemon game, right? But instead of a regular trainer, you played as a Saiyan. Move over, Pokemon X and Y, because Pokemon Z is finally here. And you wouldn't believe it, in this one you play as Vegeta, and along with Goku, get a mission from Piccolo to stop clone number 17 from destroying the world. And rather than do any proper training, it's time to level up some Pokemon instead. The only difference being your choices are all the fully evolved, yet still somehow level 5 versions of all the original starters. Remember that episode where Goku and Piccolo tried to get a driver's license? This makes just about as much sense. Don't worry, I will tell you both what is going on. You may, um, you may want to work on that English a bit, Piccolo. Honestly, there really isn't much new going on in this one. I mean, you still fight Brock as the first gym leader, who, instead of giving you a badge, gives you the one-star Dragon Ball. So it's like Android 17, Majin Buu, Frieza, Brock. They're all about on the same level of evil. And now, remember this bit? Puzzle game where little girls fought each other. That sounds crazy, right? Crazy, right? Crazy, right? Well, here's Moemon. What is Moemon? Well... So, I mean, this is just straight up fire red, except instead of actual Pokemon, there are these little girls dressed up as Pokemon. It's... Uh, it's a concept that's crazy enough on its own, but it's even crazier when the old man teaches you how to catch a Weedle, and the Weedle just straight up looks like a normal little girl. The thing is though, the sprite work is really well done, which fed to my curiosity. I would even go as far as to say it's extremely clever, but I feel if I were to go even further, I would probably go to jail. My Pokemon are all rock hard. All right, yep, okay, I'm done. And last, but certainly not least, Pokemon Vietnamese Crystal, which is widely well known for having the most ridiculous translation of all time, and a video on Pokemon ROM hacks would not be complete without it. How ridiculous, you ask? Let's take a look. Go to Elf World. Welcome. Everyone call me Elf Monster. All right, Elf Monster it is. Please tell me what is your name. Liz, zich, mm, or liz. Uh, zich sounds about right. Do you get ready? Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know. It depends on the time of day, I guess. To my knowledge, this is basically just Pokemon Crystal, but the dialogue is a veritable gold mine. These people deserve awards. What is today? Uh, well, I played this on a Tuesday, so... Tusk Day okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yes. From someone who has no idea how this happens, it seems like the game script got shuffled with Google's translator for like a few hours, and we just happened to get something that's amazing. I mean, outlandish dialogue aside, it's Pokemon Crystal, which is a great time as it is, and since this didn't get remade along with Gold and Silver, this may be the definitive version of the game. Croc! Scra! Yeah, that'll show that dastardly flying Pokemon... lap. This one's clearly the best. Now, real talk, it is really, really cool that Pokemon hit its 20th anniversary, and considering I was there from the beginning, it's great to see how much Pokemon has, I mean, to be cliche, evolved. And I think, like all other good Pokemon fans out there, I'm gonna do the name proud, and I'm going to complain about every single thing the Pokemon Company does until they announce Pokemon Snap 2. That's how it works, right? Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video! I apologize for the long wait for this episode, I ran into a few snags into production that really, that really set me back a few, but I think the, the final results turned out pretty okay, I, I think so. If you liked what you saw and you want to see more, you got links to click here to check out more videos. You can always subscribe, I mean that would be, uh, that'd be really nice, and also, it'd be really really cool if you tap that little like button down there, cause that helps me out a ton. Follow me on Twitter to see me be even sassier than I am on video. And of course, a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters out there. They really help my channel grow, so for all of you out there, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.
With all that being said, I am out of here. Happy anniversary, Pokemon. I'll see you sometime later this year, I guess. Bye bye